I'm gonna begin with Ritesh by just I mean when you met Julian I was reading that he sort of said to you sort of go ahead and betray me <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> when you were kind of making this project I was wondering if you'd spoken yeah. to him since about about the movie and and uh, just how nervous you were kind of asking him on his thoughts yeah well, uh, we did a Q&A actually together about the movie last night at the BFI and uh, he saw the movie after it was ready and he sent me a very kind note saying how much he loved it. Uh, so now I've spoken to him a couple of times and he's been very generous and complimentary. Uh, but of course his, his approval and his uh, opinion mattered a lot especially because he gave us uh, both me and Nick Payne, the screenwriter, license to go you know ahead and betray him and uh, I mean both this and, and obviously the previous on the lunchbox they seem to kind of uh, focus on the notion of indirect communication kind of people just talking through packages or, or well obviously in the lunchbox for a lunchbox mm. is that just a kind of a means of storytelling that just quite appeals to you as a filmmaker well I know I wouldn't say that I mean look I think people don't really uh, say what they mean anyway even when they are sitting across from each other uh, it's really about, uh, you know, uh, there is a lot of subtext going on between people and, and how do you make human interactions uh, feel true and organic and... Uh, but no, I, w- I wouldn't say I'm fond of devices or <laughs> of communication that are indirect. No, I don't, I don't think I would put it that way. I mean, uh, Jim and, and Charlotte, obviously such distinctive actors in their own right. I was just mm. wondering about the challenge in casting younger versions of them. And if you had, if you were, if you separated the characters very much as different people, if you if you wanted them to try and kind of capture certain sensibilities of, of each other to, be, to add to that kind of authenticity. Sure. Look, the casting process for this film was a very interesting puzzle. You know, Nina Gold is a great casting director and she worked very hard on it. Um, because it has uh, seasoned actors and you know lear legends like Jim and Charlotte and Harriet, and really soulful actors like Emily Mortimer and uh, Michelle Dockery, and then actors who've never been in a movie, uh, young actors who've never been in a movie. But as far as the younger versions go, uh, I don't think I was ever looking for a look-alike uh, for both Charlotte and Jim, but really looking for the an actor who would really. Uh, sort of be able to grab onto the essence of who this person is. And when Billy Howell came in and read for the part, he auditioned for it two or three times, and, and so did Frey Mayor. And, and they were very impressive in how they grasped, uh, you know, sort of the truth about the character. Um, like if you've seen the movie, you notice that the there's not much distance between the young Tony and the old Tony. They're essentially uh, the same person. They may look different, of course one is young and one is older, but Tony in his life hasn't traveled a great distance. But but when you see Charlotte come on screen, the young Veronica is someone who ha- who could have been anyone. Uh, you know, she came, she had a lot of possibilities. But when Charlotte comes on screen with all the tragedies and triumphs of her life that she brings with her, you, you can t- tell that this character has traveled a great distance, like a lot of stuff has happened to her. Um, and that contrast was important for that character and and uh, less of a contrast for Tony's character. So that's what, you know, you were looking for. But it was a very interesting puzzle and it took us, it took us quite a while to zero down on these great actors. And, I mean, the character of Tony is fascinating because he's quite flawed and I mean, he's quite, there, there are even times where he's quite grumpy and quite unaccommodating to kind of strangers, but he's, do you think, I mean, obviously these imperfect, imperfections make him very human, but do you think that Jim Broadbent is one of quite a few actors that could have played him just in the sense that it's impossible not to like Jim Broadbent and we have to be on Tony's side? Mm. And do you think that Jim Broadbent really helped the bridge that kind of relationship between the viewer and the character where no, we absolutely. were always rooting for him? Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's very hard not to like Jim, both in person and on the screen. He's a very endearing presence, you know. So, uh, and also, you know, I think, I don't know, I, I always read about how Tony's an unlikable character, but since I read the novel too, I've always liked Tony. And maybe that's got to do with not me not being from here, you know, uh, from being from outside. I just always loved Tony, but I, I think you're exactly right. Uh, J- Jim makes it very easy to like him, definitely. And I mean, just... To go back to, to, the, to the lunchbox, I was just wondering, because obviously that got a BAFTA nomination, for example. I mean, mm. do you really feel that that was such a, a huge project for you and that it kind of opened doors? I mean, obviously you've got this project now and your, your next one. Do you, do you think you'll always look back at, at the lunchbox as being the, the one that really pushed your kind of career? I mean, it was, I mean, deservedly so, but it's, I don't know, I think, do you think that it's, 
Have you found it easier to make a movie second time around than perhaps you did the first? No, absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's uh, it it was a real gift uh, that movie for everyone, all of us who worked on it, and a real labor of love for me. So. Uh, I look at it very fondly, you know, I look back at the times when we were making it and we were completely unaware of where it's going to go. I look back at the, those times with a lot of nostalgia. It hasn't been that many years. It was five years ago, four years ago when I was on a set with it. Five, I think. And I look back at the time with just uh, absolute nostalgia and, you know, of course you can't go back there again. Uh, but one, one is always trying to recreate that same kind of uh, passion and the same kind of drive that was behind that movie. Um, but, uh, no, absolutely, it's been a real gift, that movie, to, to me. And, uh, uh, you know, it was really, you know, I mean, the universe has a funny way of, uh, you know, sending stories to you. And I feel like if you don't take it and write it down, it'll, I don't know who said this, but it's very poignant. The story will find another medium to come into the world. Um, and I'm, I'm glad when that came to me, I sat down and wrote it, you know. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. You. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!